We start with Bill on this one and just work our way down. Uh, Bon, you mentioned something about the platform, and one of the questions that was submitted is about the platform. It says, if you could add one thing or cut one thing from our platform to expand the party, what would it be? Bill? Uh, good question. I guess part of my philosophy as chairman is the chairman is not a dictator. He does not get to dictate the platform. And the, the platform is an organic process that comes from the caucuses on up. And I think there's some very good things in the, in the platform about how the principles of the platform standing for free market principles and you know, are a good building block for us to go out and talk to our neighbors and talk to people in our communities. And, and I think our party's brand you know, has to be one that can reach out to young people. You know, I was just talking to a colleague at work uh, this week, and he says that you know, Republicans can win the next um, generation, his generation, um, you know, by talking about civil liberties, talking about internet freedom, and talking about personal rights. And I think that's got to be you know, a key cornerstone to us winning. I mean, I think we do have a very good um, principles behind our platform, but fundamentally, we don't have enough people voting Republican. And we can do that by building our grassroots, enabling them to you know, shape the platform so that it meets the people, of the needs of the people in their communities, and then taking that positive message out to the voters of Minnesota. But fundamentally, we don't have enough people voting Republican. I think part of that is our messaging uh, that's we're conveying to the communities in Minnesota. Well, I agree with Bill in terms of the, the party chair really not being um, the person who dictates the party platform. Um, I think we are the uh, protectors of the process by which the platform is amended, and, and to that extent, you can count on me to have an absolutely uh, fair and even hand as we go through that. Um, I know we made a couple of uh, moves recently that I like, and one of them is we took the uh, entire platform document and we distilled it up and I believe it fits on a pretty nice card, seven key principles that I believe uh, people can relate to better. Um, one other thing that I learned in this process is that uh, way back, literally 30, 40 years ago, uh, the platform was reestablished essentially in its entirety as a set of platform planks for the upcoming election cycle. And I don't think any of us up here are running on changing the platform, but a process change we might want to think about would be, would it make sense that every state uh, convention in the spring to lift out the key things that we actually want our party to run on and the key messages that we want to deliver to the electorate. So we don't change the platform per se, but we tailor it and we make it real and relevant to the circumstances of the time. I think it's kind of interesting that my two opponents uh, didn't answer the question. And I agree with that. I don't think I want to answer that question either. Uh, basically, as, as I said before, it's a process of 50,000 people coming to a consensus. If you were at the last convention, in spite of the fact that it was a little bit disorganized in some ways, uh, we came to a stunning consensus in almost every one of those platform points. And I, I think that's almost miraculous. I would not consider changing any of I, I will always consider getting up and speaking at a precinct caucus, BPOU, congressional district, or a state convention on one of those issues, but I would not ever, as state party chair, consider changing those points. Uh, I, I think Keith's idea is uh, leading to uh, an interesting point. Uh, we've talked often, uh, well, not often enough, but over the years about uh, putting together a list of priorities. Now, it's really difficult to figure out how to do that. So let me just finish this one idea quickly. The DFL has a platform, and they also have a statement every year of their legislative priorities. That's something we need to take it from the platform, something consistent with the platform, uh, but to give us legislative priorities or so the caucuses. Uh, will uh, know what we expect, and so the constituents will know what to expect of their legislators. Uh, this is our Bill Colson, and uh, we're we'll probably this way. Uh, what do you see as the future of the Phoenix database? Well, I've heard, I mean, when I was
was working on several key campaigns at the federal level in the last year. There's a number of complaints that came uh, regarding Phoenix that a large percentage of data was uh, unusable. And I think we finally you know, have to go out there and you know, look at uh, solutions to ensure that the data that we have is good. I mean, just changing the software programs is not going to be sufficient. I mean, it fundamentally comes back to having the resources and the people on the ground to identify voters. That, get, that means we have to have a strong and vibrant grassroots that can you know, raise money and on the local level to help with fundraising. We also have volunteers to go out and fundraise. And people are more likely to be committed and engaged in what's going on if they have a voice and a say in the process. You know, attempts to impose top-down control on the party from D.C. dictating our caucus process or uh, you know, trying to limit de how, what debates the party can establish for presidential candidates. That's fundamentally the wrong direction to go if we have a strong and vibrant grassroots that can go out and fix the data in Phoenix. Uh, I agree with Bill. Um, it's more than technology. It's the people in the process and the technology that leads to a successful system like that. Having said that, uh, if I'm your chair, I will be shocked if we are still on the Phoenix platform, uh, even in a few months. Uh, we don't need to own our own technology platform. Uh, there are plenty of industry standard platforms. We don't need to own all the servers and the wires and all the stuff that we've got. Um, we need to redesign that, and I've actually undertaken an effort with some colleagues of mine uh, to design what that needs to look like, how the inputs would come in, how they would be validated, um, the kinds of uh, mechanisms for scanning the uh, outside social media world and bringing those kinds of inputs in, uh, and then delivering the tools, not just to the VPOUs and the CDs, but to all the outside activist groups that are part of our kind of GOP, GOP um, uh, allies and uh, the candidates, all these people need tools and the ability uh, to mobilize and get people educated on our candidates and, and hopefully to vote for us. So um, uh, I'd say uh, absolutely certain we'd be making a pretty fundamental change there and you'd have a much more robust system with real value uh, to the end users a year from now. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. As I said, on the 27th, I was the statewide voter identification chair and I've been active in this for many years. Uh, back in the back in the day, I guess I should say, when Lyle Schwarzkopf was in charge of Hennepin County, we had uh, we had three by five cards. Now that was uh, a system which is better than anything we've had since, because it was personal. Every every precinct chair woman, as it turned out, had a shoebox under her bed, literally. And uh, these three by five cards were in there and they would somehow get transferred to the candidates so that they could send out the mail. Uh, this was very thorough, very, very thorough. We haven't had anything since, like it since then. Phoenix is dead. Uh, Jonathan Thomas, uh, who's one of the developers, is working now on developing a new system. I think it could be completely decentralized. Uh, it's at least a possibility where there are people using their own computers and uh, state party software uh, could make the thing work. But the point is, it's got to be precinct oriented and probably even below the precincts. Uh, maybe 10 to 15 units within each precinct, all in blocks. That's what we do in Senate District 33. Uh, and that's the way that we can make it work. As state party chair, that would be one of my highest priorities. 